I just learned something and I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around this. Did you know that for some people, motorcycles are just a phase? I, I don't get it. D does it make any sense to you? Well, for the rest of us, those of us for whom riding a motorcycle is as embedded in our DNA as the shape of your belly button or your earwax type. Yeah, earwax type is genetic. But I digress. So here's a list of some of the motorcycle items that after a lifetime in this sport, I just can't live without. Some of these are going to be expensive. Some are going to be super cheap. But all of them are, for realsies, motorcycle related items that if they were taken away from me, it would really disturb my joy. I'm going to skip over the super obvious stuff like the motorcycle itself, top quality tires, and top quality riding gear because I think that's fairly obvious. Let's first focus on maintenance and garage related stuff before we talk about riding related stuff. Plus, I'm going to try to move through this list pretty quickly, so buckle up your helmet because this is motorcycling. The centerpiece item that has made motorcycle ownership profoundly better is a hydraulic motorcycle scissor lift. You can make a table out of wood and you can get that cheap one from Harbor Freight. But my humble advice to you is buy right or buy twice. This is the Motolift ML12. It's made by the same folks who make Nomar tire changers and like their tire changers, it's full of subtle features that make this, in my humble opinion, one of the best lifts you can buy. Most notably are these track strap connectors. Most tables have one or two tie down points that are never in the right place. Each of these slots is a potential tie down point with these quick release strap things. Instead of using a hydraulic ram, it uses a Goodyear air spring. That means it's virtually maintenance free and not prone to leaks. And should it fail, I can get one of those at virtually any auto parts store. And it would be a shame not to mention their removable plate that makes pulling wheels off bikes with full fenders significantly easier. Having a table makes every single aspect of motorcycle ownership easier and cheaper. Yeah, cheaper, by a lot. Locally, our shop rates are about 150 an hour. One shop I know of, their rate is 200 an hour. It doesn't take many jobs done yourself before a table pays for itself. And not even big stuff. Change your oil. Remove your wheels. Install a slip-on. Install a new chain and sprockets. Change your brake pads. All of these tasks are pretty straightforward and easy with basic tools, but it's made even easier when you're not kneeling on concrete and cardboard. Homius erectus, the way God intended. This is the way. While I do love my tire changer, I can't call it a can't live without item. I could live without it as long as I had my table to make removing wheels so much easier. Most shops, if you buy the tire from them and bring in the wheel off the bike, there's no extra charge for mount and balance. Working on your bike goes from a miserable chore to something I honestly look forward to. Above everything else on this list, the scissor table is my most beloved, most used motorcycle purchase. I wouldn't be without one. Wheel stands and even just a small pancake compressor are a must. Little compressors are cheap, like less than $100. And I've acquired quite the collection of Pitbull stands because they just seem to last and are fairly modular to accommodate different kinds of lift points from buttons to spools to cradles. This front stand is modular to lift the bike from the steering stem so you can remove your forks for service, which again will save you a mountain of cash and shop fees. Or it'll cradle the bottom of the fork legs for a simple wheel removal. If you buy these things brand new, they're not cheap, but every one of these Pitbull stands was purchased used from Craigslist. You know, I, I feel so bad for motorcycles that have to sleep outside in the cold and in the snow. It's inhumane, but a solution may be easier than you think. Years ago, my buddy hopped on Craigslist and bought a used Rubbermaid garden shed, disassembled it, and put it back together in the back of the yard at the house he was renting. He did this for years, moving that Craigslist shed from rental to rental for nearly a decade. And did you know that if you get on Amazon, you can buy a motorcycle maintenance worthy shed for, I'm not kidding, around $350. This one is a relatively new purchase for me, but man, I love this thing. A medium sized Ugga Dugga. Not the massive one. This pig really only gets used on the single sided swing arm nut. 
Unnecessary unless you have a bike that needs it. But the 3.8 drive Ugga Dugga gets used constantly. I really don't use it much for putting things back together, but for removing stuff, the middle Ugga Dugga impact driver is fantastic. I chose Milwaukee simply because they sponsor racing. But the brand is less important. Milwaukee, Bosch, Makita, Ryobi, they're all good these days. No shop is complete without this little necessity, a garage fridge. Properly stocked with uh, before work beverages and uh, after work beverages. The modern gas can is pure evil. The vent-free spout just means you spill everywhere. There is a special place in hell for whomever came up with the design of the modern gas can spout. Fortunately, a race gas can like this one from VP Racing paired with the VP Racing Valved Spout, and everything is right with the world again. No more spilled fuel, and, and I'd be loath to part with mine. Everyone needs a torque wrench, but when it comes to working on motorcycles where the greater half of most everything is shredded into aluminum, getting the lighter inch pounds torque wrench will save future you from so many stripped threads. And you don't even need to get a super expensive one. Beam style ones work a peach, and some of the best mechanics I know still prefer beam style over fancy dancy digital ones. If you don't have a magnet on a stick, get one. You will drop a bolt. You will drop the nut in the back of your battery and it'll fall into some impossible to reach place. For less than a fiver, get a magnet on a stick or two. Before making this video, I polled our channel members and asked them what their can't live without motorcycle item was. Overwhelmingly, the answer was, I can't live without my Cardo. I'll be honest, I was slow to really fall in love with headsets. It wasn't until the modern Cardo that actually works as advertised that I really understood what all the fuss was about. Communicating with buddies or the better half, listening to music or a podcast during a boring commute, getting step-by-step -step directions from your phone in your pocket. All these little things just make the day-to-day -day riding experience better. Full disclosure, we do have a relationship with Cardo. They've been really great to us and to you. At any time, you can use coupon code RIDEWELL for a discount from the Cardo website. And since we're on this topic, having some device on the handlebars, either a mount for your phone, we prefer quad lock, but I'm old school and I still opt for the dedicated motorcycle GPS system. Simply because it works with gloves, it's less prone to damage from vibrations, and it allows my phone to stay safe and sound in my pocket. I love not getting lost in an unfamiliar city or being able to plan out a route. Then when I'm riding, I'm free to focus on my riding as long as I follow the purple line. Praise be to the purple line. It knows all things, it provides all things. All hail the purple line. Let me know if you'd like me to make a video about how I like to plan and build my GPS motorcycle routes. Now this next item you may not live without, quite literally. I don't leave home without my Garmin inReach. A subscription to the service is about $12, and that's great. It'll do live tracking of your rides that loved ones can follow even if you don't have any cell service. If you get in a really bad pickle without cell service, you hit the SOS button and help is on the way. But the feature that makes this something I can't live without is the search and rescue insurance. In my situation, I have two insurance plans attached to my one device, one for me and one for Mrs. Canyon Chasers. If things do go wrong anywhere in the world we happen to be, if we need a helicopter to come get one or both of us, we have insurance, so we don't have to foot that bill. It's a surprisingly cheap thing that could potentially save us a small fortune. Sometimes you wanna carry your crap with you, and a backpack works. I'm a big fan of Kriega bags that are designed specifically for motorcycles. The straps are designed to go around your shoulders. But I always worry, if I were to crash with a backpack, what does that added weight and lump attached to my body do as I tumble down the road? So instead, I prefer a bag on the bike. We ran tank bags for years, but I gotta admit, a tail bag is nicer. It's totally out of the way when you're riding and you don't have to remove it to fill up. I prefer this small Kriega bag. It carries everything from the drone and camera gear to just random stuff for a weekend getaway. Mrs. Canyon Chasers prefers this nifty bag from Nelson Rig. Is anyone else bothered by the fact that in America, we have to have three different kinds of insurance just for our head? Anyway, our last two things are head related. Earplugs. If you don't ride with earplugs, start now. Tinnitus is real, it sucks, I hate it, and I would give most anything to have my hearing back. Just like everyone has different earwax, everyone's ears are shaped differently. 
No affiliation, but if you go to earplugstore.com and order a sample kit to find out which plugs work for your ears, then you can order a giant box of your favorite plugs for less than $20. This last one, I mentioned it before, and it made the internet angry. A dark smoke visor. Now, I know that Canon Chaser subscribers are smarter than the average writer, so I didn't feel the need to explain this, but for those of you who aren't subscribed yet, unless you're Corey Hart, don't wear a dark smoke visor in the dark. Some of you got that joke. I see you. But for the rest of the time, a dark smoke visor is pure joy, especially if the sun shines where you live. It cuts down glare, it reduces heat. You don't have to wear sunglasses under your helmet, which is more comfortable, and, it, and it's more private. When I close the tinted visor, I'm young and attractive. And if you do get caught out at night, a pair of clear lens glasses should be enough to get you where you're going. That's my list of motorcycle things I can't live without. I put links to lots of things in the description. Most of them are affiliate links to Amazon, which helps keep the channel going. But is there anything that I missed? What is your can't live without motorcycle thing? Let me know. Please click like and subscribe and consider becoming a channel member. We're now able to make more member exclusive stuff for you guys. Plus, it's the best way to sidestep the algorithm to make sure you get the content that you want to watch. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please keep watching and check out this video that I think deserves more attention. Thanks so much for watching. Ride on and ride well.